photo walking Las Vegas, shooting the skyline from the best garage roofs in town, searching for the lost art of neon, and of course, we're going to walk up and down the strip. We're also going to meet up with a local photographer, Homer Leewag, who will show us his two favorite hidden spots in town. But first, let's begin on the Las Vegas Strip. So the basics of visiting Las Vegas haven't really changed much since the 1940s. The big resorts of Vegas dominate the Strip from one end to the other, and you walk up and down the street gawking at the enormity of the show. The Strip itself is a string of big hotel casinos that all offer much of the same, gambling and over-the-top sensory overload to get you in the door. You could photo walk the Strip in a 1.6 mile stroll getting shots of some of the funny statues and exciting recreations. But remember kids, these buildings were built on gambler's losses, not winnings. Viva la France! Here we are in Paris, Paris, Nevada. The replica, of course, of the Eiffel Tower here at the Paris Hotel in Las Vegas on the Las Vegas Strip. Uh, the Strip is like the Hollywood Walk of Fame, like Times Square, tourist central. It's great for people photography and just having a good time. Photos on your wall? Probably not, but there's some fun stuff, so I'm going to give you a quick look at some of that fun stuff to check out, and then we'll move on for some of the more arty photos and hidden stuff. The most photographable hotels by my book are the Excalibur, Luxor, Paris, Flamingo, Link, which you'll hear more about in a minute, there's a reason, Caesars, and the Venetian. This is Chris over here. Chris lives in Las Vegas. He knows a lot about the history. Tell everybody why to stay away from the Strip. Now, I'm going to take them. I'm taking them to the Strip to show it to them because I know that <laughs> if you're going to come to Las Vegas, you're going to be on the Strip but anyway. Be... It's like going to Hollywood Boulevard. You know, you're going to go there no matter how many times I tell you not <laughs> to go there. You're going to go to the Strip. What's good about the Strip from a it's good photographic? For, it's good for people watching all walks of life everybody's welcome rich poor it doesn't matter go have some fun the casinos are open arms it's just not my cup of tea i don't gamble i don't like the parking and the congestion on but, the strip what would be the most photogenic of the hotels if you're going to go take two or three shots of the las vegas strip bellagio around the fountain seems to be the no-brainer everybody does that you know and it's you're not going to get the whole strip from there but that is the center i like a good bellagio shot but even better than that for my money is the collective strip as a big beautiful skyline straight on or a scene from above so how are we going to do that i've got some ideas <laughs> So one of my top tips for photographing the Las Vegas skyline, look for those amazing hotel garages. A lot of them, if you go up to the roof, you can come up here, you get a great view of the skyline. We're right now, we are at the Virgin Hotel, the former Hard Rock Hotel, eighth story. You've got Mandalay Bay on the left, you've got the Venetian all the way on the other side, and then some, and you can't even fit this all in one frame. But you've seen this amazing view. I would recommend a panorama for up here to fit it all in and of course a time lapse is absolutely awesome. Next up, the top floor of the Rio All Suites Garage. I could save yourself a trip, don't bother, but we have train tracks, we got the freeway, we got power lines. It's too much. If you've got a camera and you could zoom in on Harris and the Mirage and Treasure Island and Caesar's Palace, yeah, but I think you could do that way better over at the Virgin Hotel. So let's cross the freeway and give the rooftop garage at the Bellagio Hotel and Casino a try. Okay, I love this view. We are on the top floor of the Bellagio parking garage. It's a little smaller, a little lower than some of the other garages. Fourth story, but great view of the strip. If you wanted to get a picture of the Paris Eiffel Tower replica and the hot air balloon right next door, this is the place to come to. Plus, it just gives you a different look for the, the Bellagio and Caesars Palace next door and some of the hotels on the strip. And it's free parking. Can't beat that. Before we go any further, it's time for a quick lunch break. 
Our favorite restaurant in Las Vegas, hands down, is a little place called Juan's Flaming Fajitas. It's on Tropicana, about 10 minutes from the Strip, but is definitely worth the trek. Their specialty is, you guessed it, Flaming Fajitas. Okay, now back to the Strip and photographing her from above. The usual suspects for getting the shot are the places that charge admission, the Stratosphere Hotel, the Paris's recreated Eiffel Tower, and the Link High Roller Ferris Wheel. The Paris Eiffel Tower is the best spot to see the Bellagio Water Fountain show from across the street above, but unfortunately, it's through a cage. It's very hard to shoot from up here, especially with a smartphone, but if you have a camera and you can slip your lens through it and get something decent, great, but overall, I say good luck. The Link Ferris wheel is a unique ride, but unfortunately you're shooting through a dirty window. My tip, once again, is to put your camera right up to the glass. This will help minimize some of the distractions. The Stratosphere is more camera friendly. It has a deck from which you can snap away looking south of the strip. On timing, most people want to take the shots at night because the strip is just cooler that way. I mean, take a look at my back-to-back -back shots of the Strat, shot in the daytime and shot at nighttime. You decide. Okay, so we went to the top at some of those attractions. We shot through cages, dirty windows. Right behind me is my favorite spot for looking down at the Strip. Hands down, it's the Waldorf Astoria. They have a bar up here. They don't charge admission. They ask you that you get a drink and maybe a snack or something. And they have a beautiful view of the Strip. Check it out. Finally, the crosswalks on the strip can be tricky, but you can pull them off. They're on most street corners. There's good news and there's bad news up there. Let me show you both. Most have giant barriers that will block your shot, but there's usually two clear openings per crosswalk. That's how I got my shot of the strip right here and the fabulous Flamingo neon sign. Now remember my tip at the Link Ferris wheel about dirty windows? Well, here we go again. Because of the, the reflections, what I like to do to get around them, and you've probably heard me say this before, but just put your lens right there. So here's before, and then you stick it right on the glass and you see the reflections disappear. So I'm not going to talk to you about photographing gambling and the tables and inside the amazing casinos. That's a whole other photo walk. But I will talk to you about shooting the lost art of neon. It's daytime, so the flamingo has not turned on its neon yet. So let's cut, go straight to evening, and search for classic Las Vegas neon. The strip used to be dominated by classic neon signs by the likes of the Stardust, the Dunes, and the Frontier, and they're now long gone. On the strip, the flamingo is all that remains. But to see great neon in Las Vegas, you need to come downtown. It is a neon smorgasbord. You got the California over here, you got the Golden Gate, you got Binions and the Four Queens, you got so much of it. And then on Fremont Street, you have the Fremont Street Experience. It's a sensory overload. Take a look. For photographing neon, it's pretty simple. Shoot right after sunset or right before sunup to catch the moody skies and the colors of the neon just right. Turn the flash off and hold the camera steady. Video makes a really striking image of the moving lights. The best collection of neon in Las Vegas is at the Neon Museum, which restores and houses classic signs from the 40s, 50s, and 60s. Let's take a look. to the next stop. 
Now we're in the Las Vegas Arts District. This was chosen by my friend Homer Lewak. He is a local photographer and he's the co-director of David Copperfield's Productions. And where is he? There you are. Hey, Homer. I was looking for you and now I'm here. Magically. Yes. Yes. Well, thank you for doing With this. With the magic of camera. <laughs> yes. Thank you for doing this, Homer. It's great to see you again. Great. The last time I saw you, you were levitating an iPad for me. Yes. That was fun. Yes. And I would, today we're doing no levitation. We're just going to explore some of your favorite photo spots in Las Vegas, which starts with the Arts District, and then it's going to get even cooler with Red Rock Canyon, right? Yep. Can't wait. So tell everybody about the Arts District. Um, the Arts District is sort of uh, booming right now. They just redid Main Street and made it uh, beautiful, repaved everything. Tons of coffee shops and breweries opening up and just great graffiti everywhere that's changing all the time and uh, just an amazing place that's just growing and I, and I love it because it's just sort of another side of Vegas that a lot of people don't see. Besides Homer, we have a friend here with you. Yes, this is Hudson. Say hi Hudson. That's Hudson. Yes, a very talkative dog. Yes, she actually is my white balance, so as a photographer, that's very handy. All right, so let's bring Hudson with us on our little photo walk of the Las Vegas Arts District. Sounds great. Let's do it. So we, we have a printing store here, yeah, and signs, this is and a church, my, and... and... This is my favorite antique store in Las Vegas. just opened up like a month ago, and it's just curated antiques. Love it. Do they know you in there? They do. Yeah, what do you think? What would they say if we walked in? Um, Probably say hi to my dog. Yeah. <laughs> what would they say to our camera? I have no idea. Uh, there's dog. one way to find out, right? Yeah, Come introduce us to the owner of this place. Uh, Natalie, right? Hi, how are you? This is Natalie, and this is a princess coffee chef. Hi, chef. chef. Hi, how are you? I'm Jeff, and, nice to meet you. and you know Homer. Of and course. I have a feeling that if we come right in between, sure. you'll have two mics on both sides okay. yeah. to, pick, to pick up, right? Yeah. Tell everybody about what we got here. So, uh, this is Authentic, uh, the newest, uh, coolest furniture store in downtown Las Vegas, in my humble opinion. And we're in the Arts District of Las Vegas, Homer's home away from home. Sure. Homer suggested we come visit here because he okay. thinks it's really cool. Okay. Tell us about the Arts District. Oh, the Arts District. District is amazing and I moved over here on commerce just because I saw the opportunity before everything starts moving this way. I have a love for furniture and just really cool things so I opened this little store and it's been amazing. Great, great support from the community. And how long have you been open? Oh, about two months. That's it, That's huh? It. Okay. That's it. Everything is personally sourced by me and set up and staged by me. It's a labor of love. And going well? Going really, really well. If you're going to pick one thing to photograph, what hits you? Um, I like things like this, where it's just kind of nostalgia and texture. The old typewriters yeah. have the keys are worn, so you can get some of the macro shots of the old keypad. And I mean, there's so much to look at. It's OK, you're going to shoot on film. I'm going to do an iPhone shot, see how we do. OK. Yours will be higher resolution. Now, Homer, you said you, you underexposed your iPhone shots. Yeah. So it's the simple thing of putting your finger on and, and lowering well, it? Well, a lot of people don't know this. They take pictures and, you know, they look pretty decent. But yeah. what, I, what I do is I will take a picture and I'll hold it down right. until the lock mm -hmm. comes Expose on. And a lot of people don't know that. So if I were just to shoot it like this, it looks great and all, but it doesn't feel like the mood that I'm trying to get. So I'll hold for a few seconds until I see the auto exposure, auto focus lock going. And then I can dial down that exposure and get that nice mood. Now this looks more like it feels, even though this is what it really looks like. But this is what, it, to me, this is what that picture feels like. Are they going to pose? You guys going to pose? Are you guys going to pose or are you just standing there? This is Instagram shot. I, I need to pose with Homer here. There's also a cool shot because you can have this and the stratosphere in one shot. 
Oh, yeah. Which gives you, a lo gives, gives you a location here. I'd be kind of bothered by the power lines. Well, the kind, you know what? They're leading lines of composition. How's that? That's right. Yeah. That's good. Great, great light. You ever had the problem with the phones getting bending in your pocket? That's always a problem. I mean, this place is ever changing. I mean, that yellow building was probably not yellow a month ago. Okay, Homer, I am so impressed. I, this is not the Las Vegas that I have known and loved for so many years. Very different. I love it. Yeah, and a way different look than most people will see down in the Strip, and so much fun. Yes, I agree. And the cool thing about hanging with you is there's another trick up your sleeve. Yes, I have another place, so let's go. Where are we going? Red Rock Canyon. Or in other words, out to the desert, just a short drive away. Homer, I don't think we're in Kansas anymore. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Um, well, it is a little bit windy, but we are in Red Rock Canyon, and this is sort of my secret spot. And there, obviously there's a lot of amazing trails and day hikes and night and, and just beautiful scenery, but this place I can come to, shoot some pictures and be out of here in 10 minutes if I need to. No casino, no, no casino. showgirls. No, well, you have to bring your own showgirls. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and it's gorgeous and it's right at the edge of town. Yep. So what I do is if I can see these mount sort of these mountains from my house and if I see that there's an amazing cloud formation, lenticular clouds form over this mountain range all the time. Uh, if there's a storm over here and there's like rain coming down in spots, I'll come down here, park at this little spot. This is a, a trailhead. Well, let's we'll... talk about some of your great pictures from here because you sent me some and we can show them. Yeah. Lightning. Yes, lightning. I was parked here a couple of years ago and a lightning storm was coming right at me from these mountains and the electrical activity was probably it felt like a lightning strike every 10 seconds. I got so much lightning and then it was coming at me I had to leave so I left and drove to the nearest gas station which is about a mile down towards Red Rock Casino right down there. I pulled into a gas station. It looked like the end of the world was happening. Lightning strikes, loud bangs, debris flying everywhere while the storm passed me. And while I was sitting there, I played some Kino and won 300 bucks. And of course the cliche is, the rule is, I've been told nobody lives in Las Vegas and actually gambles, but you broke the rule. I did, but you know, a lightning storm. Doesn't happen every day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And that's our photo walk from Las Vegas. It's time to say goodbye. I hope you had a great time. I hope you'll stay tuned for more photo walk episodes. If you have any questions, I'd love to hear from you on Twitter or Instagram. I'm at Jefferson Graham. For complete mapping information about this episode and others, check out our website, thebestphotowalk.com. Time to say goodbye, so I'll see you on the next photo walk. Bye-bye.